Hi, welcome back to Expert Maths Tutor. This video is intended to complement the introduction to waves animation on the site. This is just a chance for us to have a look at some of the types of exam questions we might get along the lines of that video. So, what are the main things from the video? Well, one thing they love to ask in the exam is the difference between longitudinal and transverse waves. They could dress that up, they could say, tell me the difference between a sound, name some differences between a sound wave and a light wave knowing that sound waves are longitudinal, light waves are transverse, would answer it the same way. The main thing people make mistakes on here is not talking about the direction of energy transfer. So for longitudinal waves, the oscillations or the vibrations are parallel to the direction of energy transfer. You can't just say the oscillations are parallel to the wave. You have to say the oscillations are parallel to the direction of energy transfer or for transverse waves, the oscillations are perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. You miss that energy transfer bit out, you're going to lose those marks. So don't miss that out. What else could they ask us? Well, they could ask us lots of questions about waves particularly, and how might they catch us out? Okay, well, let's have a look. So there's a wave. How might they catch us out? They might, and I've seen it in an exam before, they might give you a value like this. They might say, that this here is uh, x, and they might say, what is x? Or what does x represent on the wave? Now, most people would make a mistake here and think that x represents the amplitude. And that some people, this is the sort of question where people go, oh, the example is trying to trick us. They're not trying to trick you. They're just trying to see if you really understand the basics of waves. And what they've shown you is not the amplitude, what is x? Well, x is twice the amplitude. It's two times the amplitude. So don't make a mistake there. Remember, the amplitude is just from the top to the central line. Another thing, very regularly done wrong on this type of question is it'll ask you to label a wavelength. And what lots of people do is they just do that and they go, that's a wavelength. The problem here is that is not accurate enough for an exam. If I do the dotted lines down here, that's nowhere near a wavelength. We know a wavelength is from one point to the next same point on the wave. And here I've done it from practically in the middle of the wave. Initially, it looked like my line was good, but when I actually compare it, it's not right for a wavelength. So how do we do it properly? Well, to do it properly, I would mark on the top of each wave and then draw my line between them, and that's now a wavelength. The examiner knows straight away, you know exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about the top, of, top there to the top there. Don't just draw a random arrow one that you think looks like it's probably a wavelength, okay? So there are two easy mistakes to make on a question like that. Other things they could ask us, they could say uh, this from here to here, they could give you a time period. So they could say from there to here, to this point here, was 10 seconds. Yeah, they could say right to the edge of the board there was 10 seconds. So what's the frequency of the wave? So they could say from that wave represents 10 seconds worth of time, what's the frequency? So now we have to count the number of waves. The frequency is number of waves per second. So in this whole thing, I've got one, two, three waves. I've got three waves in 10 seconds. So I'd have to do Waves is per second, so it's how many waves are there every second? Well, I'd have to do three divided by 10, tell me there is 0 0.3 waves per second, so 0 0.3 hertz would then be my frequency. So the other thing they might ask us about is the wave equation, and a lot of people get caught out on questions about the wave equation as well. It, they do the, the general classic thing they do, which for some reason catches a lot of people out and they can mix up the units, okay? So we know the wave equation is that the speed of a wave, I'll write out, speed or wave speed is frequency times wavelength. Yeah, frequency times wavelength. So what they could do is they could say, a wave travels 
at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters a second, the frequency is 9,800 kilohertz, find the wavelength. Okay, common mistake here, we do, we rearrange this to find what wavelength is, we find it's wave speed over frequency, that's fine, no mistakes there, so that's going to tell us our wavelength. However, the mistake people make is here, it's this killer, using your units properly. What's kilohertz? Well, kilohertz is a thousand hertz, same way a kilometer is a thousand meters. So we need to convert that. It's up to you how you do it, but you don't need to do 9,800 times a thousand when you put it into your calculator. So you can either do your three times 10 to the eight, use your standard form button. Don't do times 10 to the power of eight. Use your standard form button because you can easily make mistakes when you don't use that standard form button. So three times 10 to the eight, divided by, you could just do brackets, 9,800 times 1,000, close brackets, that will give you your wave speed, or you could do your 9,800 times 1,000 first to give you, so basically we need to times this by 1,000. So we could do that first and find it's 9,800,000, and then we could do our wave speed as three times 10 to the eight, divided by our 98,000, to get our answer, okay? So let's have a look and see what that answer is. Disappeared to get my calculator, not one I can do in my head. So three EXP, or your times 10 button, normally on the bottom next to your decimal place. Eight, so three times 10 to the eight, don't need to press anything else, divided by nine, eight, zero, 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 zero. And we find the answer is, In this case, 30.6 meters. Yeah, really possibly we should have done that to two significant figures because that's what we were given in the question. But going to a one decimal place will always get you'll always be fine with that. Yeah, so just make sure you're checking the units on here and there's no killers or something like that on there to confuse you. Again, I could have put milli meters they could have said you had a microwave with a wavelength of 10 millimeters work out what the frequency is that's generally the way they're going to look at it in these questions they're going to throw in something with a killer or a milli something like that just be really really careful you check your units but using this wave equation should be pretty straightforward make sure with those transverse and longitudinal you're talking about the direction of energy transfer and make sure you're being really accurate when you're drawing on your wavelengths and when you're thinking about what your amplitude is.